Welcome to Commander Tune-Ups, episode five. Wow. Five episodes? Five. That's like one hand's worth. Okay. Oh my goodness. I know. Next time I'm going to have two hands. And when we hit 11, I don't know what I'm going to do. We have to share. I have to go 10 and you have to go one. I'm going to freak out. All right. Commander Tune-Ups, episode five. We're your hosts, the Nitpicking Nerds. I'm Joe Cherries. That means that I'm busy. You must be busy. That's a, such a better name. Uh, better than Joe Cherries? I think not. Uh, uh, you're wrong. I said I think not, and therefore, I think not. You're right. This is the series where we take your... Viewer-submitted decks. Yes, our subscribers. Viewer-submitted decks. And we upgrade them tune with them your up. restrictions. You yeah, we tune them up. With your restrictions in mind. Tell us what you like. Don't like it for the combos. Don't like... Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Do like whatever. Budget. Themes. What? Themes. Tell us what Et you want to be done. To tell us. In order to submit subscribe. your... Subscribe. Leave a comment. You know, that's how you submit your with deck. your deck list. Yes, that is all you need. Leave to do. a comment with the deck list below, preferably tapped out. We did have somebody put every single um, card individually on the list, which is fine. In the comments, that we can do out. that because we're gonna. But we're just gonna upload that to tapped out from there. Yeah, yeah that's what happened with this one. <laughs> yeah. Is that what, that's Marin? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that was actually Marin. Yeah. yeah. He actually commented the whole thing one by one down the list. Fine. Doesn't matter. We to took us. it. We put it on tapped out. And we worked on it from there because that's the easiest way to work it out. Today, whose deck is this? This would be Jared Bartlett's Marin of Clan Nail Toth deck. Shall we read Marin of Clan Nail Toth? I think we shall. Oh, she is. Okay. Why don't you read it for us? Two black green for a 3 4. By the way, second most popular commander of all time. Uh, when we're going down the line, apparently. Yeah, we're going down the line. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get an experience counter at the beginning of your end step. Choose target creature card in your graveyard. If that card's converted mana cost is less than or equal to the number of experience counters you have, return it to the battlefield. Otherwise, put it in your hand. So at worst, this is an end step raised dead, and at best, it's end step just karmic guide return it. Pretty good. So how are we gonna abuse this little this little bad? Well, person? obviously, this deck's gonna have a lot of similarities to one of our first deck decks, Majrotha. Yes. Because it's a graveyard synergistic deck. In that deck, we'll see a lot of similarities here. Yes. There are a lot of synergies with the graveyard, obviously. But this has got some other stuff going on, too, because it's full-on creatures. There's 45 in this deck. Whew, that's almost half the deck. That's now, almost half the deck! This is just a rough estimate. Uh, it's, uh, what was the number? 45% creatures. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Can you, can you believe we did the math on that? Wow. Um, we got a number. Does it check out? Okay. Why don't you... Check out my phone. Oh, let's talk to Editor BZ, future Editor BZ. Can you put a calculator up here and prove that that's true? Because <laughs> I, I want to see it done I doubt in his, front of my I doubt his abilities. I doubt, I doubt BZ did that in his head right now. <laughs> okay. Right, moving on. First category. So, first category, yes. Why don't you take it away? Yeah, yeah no, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. My apologies. We need to be... Give me the time that Go I ahead. so rightfully deserve. Go ahead. Take it away, BZ. What we're trying to do is trigger Marin early, and we're going to do it, gosh darn it. With these, with these cards. With these cards. We want... So, Marin's pretty bad if you just play it on turn four and then you don't do anything. Then she's going to die. No. You want as many Nobody kills Marin. Right. Everybody who's like sitting at the EDH, so you got this group of four, they see you play your, your Marin, which is a commander that demands that it be answered because it has so much synergies. No one answers it. Right. They just That's usually it. what happens. They just let it go. But so, so especially if you play at our EDH tables. <laughs> you want one, two, three drops to capitalize early before you play Marin. And then you want Marin to come down and at least get a creature back to your hand from the grave. Or with some of these cases, you get one back right away. Wow! That's so much value. So right, what are some of one. these what are some of these early cards that we can use to either sacrifice or put in the graveyard before anything right. even starts? Let's start off basic and easy. You know what? You love it. Sakura Tribe Elder. One in the green for a one one second. Ramping Grove. Steve. Easy peasy. But we also have his uh, less intelligent cousin, Dawn Trader Elk, who is slightly worse. He's like Read the, that one. He's the little brother that Steve has to bring with him to make mom happy. Yeah. <laughs> so we got one green for an elk creature. A 2-2. Two -two. Wow, it's way stronger than Tribal Day. <laughs> it's a bear. It's just a bear. It's literally an elk. So it's already better than Steve. Done. Pay one green. Oh, no, that's a downside. Oh. Sacrifice. Dawn Treader Elk. Search your library for it. Basically, I'm putting it onto the Vatopeel tap, so it's exactly Steve, but you yeah. have to pay a green to so do this it. This made me sad until I did the math. So if you play this on turn two, then you sack it on turn three, 
Now you have four lands in play. And then you can untap and play Marin. Uh, if you have a second experience counter, this will come back, and then you can crack it with your leftover green on turn five, turn four. Which doesn't feel that bad. That's pretty sweet. It's pretty good. Well, not as good as Tribe Elder, which lets you just go turn two Tribe Elder in two, then you can play Marin on turn three. That's cool. But this is like the step down, because not every card in your deck can be Steve. What else do we have? What else do we have? I just asked you, what else do we have? Oh, well, I don't know. What else do we have? I don't know. Oh, what did supplier? I write in the script? Oh, Stitcher Supplier. Read it. <laughs> Stitcher Supplier, we've got a... God, this is the worst in smallest text ever in the existence. This is not even that bad. <laughs> my eyes aren't that good. Oh, my God. Baby. <laughs> Poopy baby alert, everybody. When Stitcher's, we have Stitcher Supplier. One black for a 1-1. One, one. When Stitcher Supplier enters the battlefield or dies, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Finds other creatures from Aaron to hit that are better than this. Or, you only need one experience counter to bring this thing back. You just mill three more. Yeah. You can I love this card. It was in our top ten uh, one ones for one on the honorable mention slot. Was it? If you want to check that video out. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's good advice. <laughs> What's the next one? Oh, so we're getting those quick counters. So... One well, of the best things to do is sacrificing. Not all creatures sacrifice themselves. I agree. If they did, that'd be, be a weird. really weird game, and Merit would probably be one of the best commanders of all time. Not close. That being said, creatures don't all sacrifice themselves. So Agreed. moving on, we need some sack outlets. Well, how about one of the best ones ever? Altar of Dementia. Oh. It's just good. It's just good. It's two mana for an artifact. Sacrifice a creature. Target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power from the top of his or her library into the graveyard. You mill X for X is the power. You mill, you do. You mill X for X is the power, but I forget I'd actually read the card verbatim. Right. So fans of Moldrotha will know that this is potentially a win con, but actually in this deck, if, if you have Altar of Dimension and you're somehow milling people and you're not just winning first, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, know yourself. Good idea. Know yourself. You're the target. You're almost always the target. Other than if you've cobbled off and now you're going to win the game. With cards we'll talk about later. You're going to get to see them. We'll get to talk about that. We got really Cuts excited. from this thing. We cut. You have my other. That thing is slow. Yes. And according to uh, Commander... Command Zone? According to Command Zone. I can't remember it's the name. It's overrated. It's one of those overrated cards of Commander. So get it out of every deck that's so overrated. Get it out of deck. Yeah, it's but actually... For this deck, too slow. Too slow. You don't want to... Get your first creature dead on turn four when you want to play Marin on turn four. So get out and remove it to the next category. Bye bye. Bye bye. This deck has an awesome sub theme just of like mono sacrifice. It's super cool. And I got to play with it a lot when like working on the deck. And there's a lot of spicy ones in here. Okay, well, let's get right into it. We've got the combination of three cards that are essentially the same but slightly different Flashbang Marauder and. And Mercil, what's his name? Merciless Executioner. Okay, Mer I like I know Flashback Murder. I didn't know Executioner was that. Merciless Executioner are the are actually the exact same character, different creature types. Uh, there are three ones for three. Wait a minute. He's an Executioner, so he executes each creature your opponent's control, and then often if himself. He's the only cre He just kills himself. That's what he does. Obviously, he must be the burden of sacrificing three other creatures. You have to. You have to so. You're sacrificing them to the executioner, so you're Kinda, giving yeah. you're giving this creature up to the executioner. But if your only creature is the executioner, you have to give him the same to exact him. time. You they all give die. it to himself. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. anyway. The last one uh, is play crafter, which is Newcomer. also the same thing, except for it has an extra defense and it's better. And if they don't have a creature, or they can also choose to sacrifice a planeswalker. Yeah, and which, wait, what, if, if they don't have a creature or a planeswalker, oh! they discard a card. So yeah, this card just has way more upside. Uh, that one's the best one. It's just like it's very pushed. Uh, from like fine by me. Flashback one is already very good. Merciless executioner also still very exactly good. Exactly as good. But what if we just bumped it up two notches and then the three notches? Is it's three notches better? It is. It has an extra defense. I forgot about that. <laughs> it's and also it's also a human. <laughs> good creature type. It turns out. Yeah. Uh, pretty relevant. You want sacrifice triggers, so that's good for you. Your opponents don't, so that's good for you. No. You know, these just end up. When like, you're playing against the Moldrotha deck. Then you sack Moldave, sack to Moldrotha. They don't have that many creatures out. You definitely have more than them. That's true. We're playing a creature deck. Right. So this is probably my favorite card in the deck coming up. Masurek Crowl Death Priest. 
This mofo is three mofo. black green for a 2 2. Oh, I didn't even realize that it's flying. It's a legendary oh, insect shot. It's got flying. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Whenever a player sacrifices another permanent, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. <laughs> so, so I big payoff here. Oh, oh, this is a big payoff. I want to say one thing because I did just say something really random. Big tangent here. A little tangent. A little tangent. It's just funny. We we used to play with a guy. Whenever you attacked him, no matter what, he would attempt to block it, and then, it, and then you would have to tell him every single time that the creature had flying, and then you go, oh. It's got flying. Like every so, that was, time. so that was that joke. <laughs> every time. Imagine a player who doesn't ever realize a creature is flying no matter how often you attack What a it. horrible existence to live. <laughs> it's just it's poor. You poor sap. <laughs> All right. Back to the card. That's what he does. Huge payoff for sacrifice creatures. Counts your opponent's permanents, too. So if they fetch, you get a counter. You get a Gavany Township if they fetch. Or if, let's say, you were to play Merciless Executioner. And you guys get four counters. Mm -hmm. Your whole team. And, and again, let's not forget, there's 45 creatures in stock. It's not like you're running light you're on gonna creatures have any time. Around. Yeah, you're going to have you're gonna have little useless guys that don't do that too much. <laughs> and something that I was like, kind of, I kind of thought there would be an infinite combo in this deck. No, we didn't add it. It was already in here. I kind of thought like with this guy and Persist, something would get funky. So with Puppeteer Click, which is three black black for a three two flyer, ETB, uh, steal a creature from your opponent's grave, and then at the end step you have exile that guy that you steal, and it's persist. So you have Mazurk out, and then you play your puppeteer click, and you steal whatever. Who cares? You steal... It doesn't even have to do anything. You steal, like, Aven Mind Sensor, and then you okay. use a sack outlet, and you sack Aven Mind Sensor. Cool. You get a counter on your team. Then you sack, like, you sack your puppeteer click, comes in with a minus one, get your Mind Sensor... Also, the, second, let's be very clear. It comes back with a minus one, but it immediately gets a counter. Yeah, that's what I'm because of the way triggers stack. Like right. it's going so to cancel. It's, it's it's always going to cancel. You don't even need the target to do this. Long story short, infinite uh, reanimates of your opponent's creatures and Mazurik plus whatever else you have is infinite, infinitely large. Yes, it turns out for some we also the weird reason uh, for some reason Puppeteer Click doesn't exile if it would leave the field. It only exiles oh, yeah. on end its of, trigger. End of turn. It only exiles on its trigger, which is really strange. Not that it's really that big for this combo. This combo goes off either way. You have infinite infinites of everything, but you also get any creature in the graveyard with haste infinite. Yeah, if there's a Solemn, you get to draw your whole deck. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of crazy things that oh, can happen yes, with Puppeteer is. Click. But that's just something to note. It's not like the main focus of the deck, but it's probably yep. going to happen. That's an infinite combo, and you can do it. And it doesn't take that many cards. Three-card combo. True. Also, it gives you infinite mirror and uh, experience counters. Yeah, infinite so, experience counters, so, even though past seven, you don't care. Even though past seven, you don't care, and realistically, past 16, there's not even anything. There's not even creatures left <laughs> to be getting back. There's no seven. There's no 17 mana creatures to be reanimating this is even true. in the existence of magic. So. This is true. So, another spicy meatball that you should oh, read. A spicy meatball? Oh. Smothering ab aberration? Yes. Smothering Abomination, baby. Cool, man. Smothering Abomination. It is two black, black, devoid. One of my favorite abilities of all time, which means it just has no color. Totally, totally worth being on cards. Totally worth being on cards and not confusing the players in any way, especially because there's another thing called color identity. Yeah, this card's colorless, um, but also its color identity is black. Yep, because uh, that's not confusing at all. Anyway. Flying. F four, three, flying. That's a it's not, it's not a bad rate. This is not a bad rate we're getting here for this oh, regular old creature. It's got flying. Oh, it's got flying. And at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature? Wait a minute. For free? Wait a minute. Hey, Whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Well, uh, talk about some combo in there. Uh, if you have this card out with the last combo, you draw your whole deck and you win the game. And you lose the game. Because you accidentally drew your whole deck. I don't know why you drew your whole deck so haphazardly. <laughs> why? Well, we won the game. We, we had this infinite combo. We just won. And we put all the cards in their hand for well, no if you reason. One more, then it's like, oops. <laughs> then you lose. No, because it's it's whatever. You can't. It's not a may. So, they, so you, unless you did everything right, and then right, they, they diabolic edict you. Right, <laughs> so unless you did everything right, you're dead. All right, we're dead. Who cares? That is not anything who, relevant at all. Who cares? Probably not you. Yeah, that was a really weird situation. <laughs> the more common situation is you sacrifice two or three creatures a turn, and you draw like four cards a turn. And this card's amazing. Yeah, in this deck it's amazing. Super huge. Uh, this guy's not even good enough for Battle Box, which is weird, which shows how situationally good it is. Yeah. But the situations where it's good around it, this mm -hmm. this deck has like a build as is built around this kind of. Oh, card. this is perfect. So it's thing. awesome. Right. Cool. I want to read the next one because we haven't put these in decks in a while. We got the. We haven't put any of these in decks. 
yet. Yeah. This is the first. This it's is the. A, you could say it's been a while. This is the first. Uh, how's my dictate? That's in one. Yeah, it's a really funny joke. Yeah. You can use it on your friends. Uh, <laughs> you're, if you're having a magic party and then uh, somebody plays dictator of Airbus, you can go like, hey, how's my dictate? And then Let's be go, very clear. BZ makes this joke every, every single time. Every time. And they'll, they'll go like, what? Oh. And then there'll be an awkward silence. Yeah. So try it out with your friends yep. and they won't respect you. Yep. All right. <laughs> Hit is three and black black for a enchantment with flash. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. And it's brother... Grave pack, which has slightly worse. One black, black, black for the same thing. It's brother. <laughs> it's brother. Is that a problem? I don't know. Is that a problem? I thought it was funny. Yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. I'm hilarious. So this is brother. Just deal with it. Anyway, these guys turn... These are like the board wipes of the deck. Can I help you? They are. These are the board wipes of the deck. They're, they're, they're very similar to a board wipe type of fact that you have in the deck. These right. are... You, you when you have the ability to be sacrificing your creatures, which you regularly will with things like Altar There's of Dementia. Seven free sac Alice that you can use m multiple turns. Yeah, I assume this multiple is multiple times a turn. Um, I forgot that I look over the entire deck list, but I assume there's a Viscera Seer in here. Obviously, uh, a ca yep. Carrion Feeder. Usually, you see those very commonly in these type of decks, and I assume they're in here somewhere. Plenty of goodies. I trust. I trust to be easy. I didn't look over this one hundred percent. I know my way around a green black. Deck. Hey, okay. I okay. trust. Okay. I trust this okay. man. Okay. I did. I did make some of the upgrades. Not those ones. Those guys are sweet, though. <laughs> Keep moving back. Okay, where were we? <laughs> Stop distracting me with nonsense. <laughs> with nonsense? Yes. Uh, dictate is trickier because it has flash. And you can respond to... A board wipe. A board wipe or even just a kill spell. <laughs> After everything dies? They yeah. every, all your opponents uh, are sacrificed a bunch of creatures. Trigger. You have sacrificed three creatures. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Take care, you idiots. All right, we gotta, get, we gotta get moving along. We got the next one, which I added. This is the last add in the deck. Took me forever to add it because I had to find a cut. But Pawn of Ulamog, one black black for a 2 2. Whenever it or another creature you control dies, you get a 0 1 cute little adorable Eldrazi spawn that sacks for a couple of lists. It's a really good way to get a lot of experience counters very fast. You want to sacrifice creatures? Holy crap. This gives you an extra body for every creature you sacrifice. And then those guys can sacrifice themselves. Yes, they can. This they are ready to work. So. Let's go over some of the cuts we had here. Yeah, we had a lot of that. We had a lot of these cool things. We cut Gerard, Golgari, Lichlord. He was. Okay, but your creatures don't have high power, mm. so there's not really a way to sacrifice for more than like yeah, we're not really, four damage. We're not really playing Grave Trolls, are we? Nope. I didn't think so. No Grave Troll. Yeah, I, I there's didn't... a Stinkweed up in here, but not Grave Troll. Yeah. Grave Troll, it's surprising that like in EDH, it doesn't seem... That's like, my, that's like my thing. I always preach that Stinkweed Nip is better than Grave Troll, because you can actually cast it, and no, it does things. It's a very castable card, and it has Death Touch, which is relevant. Mm -hmm. All right. And we... it's got flying. Attrition. Attrition was the last card I cut. That's what I cut for Pawn of Ulamog. I, love, I like Attrition. I felt like there's enough removal in here between the Dictates and whatever else that I don't want this intense black, you know, mana sink that doesn't kill black creatures. Yeah, it's so I, and it was like, it's like the 101st card in this deck. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it, just, it's not like I it doesn't just, belong in the stack. Yeah, it's, I ended up cutting. It's it. more of, of it's just, your own discretion, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mind also, slash. Mind slash. Uh, I upgraded into something strictly better. So mind slash lets you pay a black and sacrifice a creature at sorcery speed to make somebody you thought see somebody. And I just replaced it with mind slicer. That card is way like if you're trying to make people discard, they're gonna hate you. So you might as well just make them discard everything at once, and then they'll really hate you. Mind Slicer, two black black for a 4-3 when it dies. Each player discards their hand. And Awakening Zone. All the cuts from this. Yes. So Mind, Mind Slicer, Slicer, the upgrade from uh, Mind Slash. Which, I love that card. You just slash mines. Which. Can you imagine just like turn one, Mr. Seer, turn two, like... No, I can't. Mana Crypt, Mind Slicer. <laughs> Everybody discards their hand. I've done that before. It's fun. You usually win. That's yeah. I mean, Usually, yeah. when you need to think like that. is basically. I think it's a win cut. It's a way to win. It's it, dirty, especially when you do it early. Uh, if the decks, your decks gonna just doesn't need cards in hand a lot of the time, so you could just win like that. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean okay, your opponents are on four lands and they're just drawing random stuff. <laughs> they're in top deck mode. Yeah, I've been in top deck mode that early, and I usually scoop. Right. So here we're on to removal. 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 We need it. What are you removal for? Uh, opponent's you just, creatures. You just do whatever you want, and you win, right? No. That's EDH. Oh, we need to remove our opponent's stuff. Oh, well, let's talk let's, about it. Let's do it. This little guy costs a caterpillar. One green for a 1-1. One, one. Pay one and a green, sacrifice him, destroy target artifact or enchantment. So CMC 1 means Marin brings it back super easily. Yep. I'd rather have this than, like, 
let's say Chrysalis Pride Mage if it was in the colors. I'd rather have a one drop that's X than a two drop. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's good, because you were looking at me like an idiot. And now I know that it makes sense to you. All right. Ah, that makes sense. <laughs> this guy can stop like it stops creature hosers such as Torpor Orb or EDH something, something, staple something Torpor Something keeping orb. you down like that. That an ET like if an ETB gets stifled, Tor- stopped, you can <laughs> Torpor Orb. <laughs> Torpor Orb sees play. I, I don't know what you're talking I've about. I've never been Torpor Orbed. Yeah, it's good for you. It sucks. This just get it. gets you out of that spot. Anyway. Uh, threat of activation, also a real thing. It's like, hey, don't worry about me, because I'll blow up your Gilda Lotus. Yeah, you jerk. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> so take that. All right. What's the next one? This is your turn. Oh, it's my turn to read a card? Uh, oh. Yeah, there's only two of us. <laughs> uh, Shriek Maw. This wasn't in the deck. What? Shriek Maw wasn't in your rear deck? <laughs> That's why we're here. I scared a cat. Yeah, you just scared I my cat. I literally just scared the cat. She was sleeping. She was sleeping, and I uh, scared her because I was so mad that Chico was in the deck. I don't know why deck. we're mad. Because this is, this is like... Who cares? To me, this feels like the... How did you miss this? I'm not, even, I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm not making fun of anybody. You're being really... I'm saying, come on! I love this card. This card's okay. so good. Yeah, talk about the card. When you're talking about a graveyard deck, this is one of those cards that should be there. I agree. Though it does suffer from what attrition going to do. It can't kill black creatures. Yeah. But it's okay. So we have Shriek Maw. Four mana, or five mana, four and one black. Four, a three, two, fear. That's not that good of a rate. Why would you ever pay that? One answers the battlefield. Destroy, target non-artifact, non-black creature. It's pretty good. It's, not, it's pretty good. But what if it had some other alternative cost? I don't know. Like evoke. Ooh. Evoke. One and a black. Destroy target non black and then so when you yeah obviously it's the same thing oh, same time. when you, when you evoke it but when you evoke it it sacrifices one enters the oh, battlefield there's more upside to the evoke part it, literally it's this it this triggers your sacrifice stuff and you can respond to the trigger yep by sacrificing it to something else yep it also allows you to get a tr- counter onto man very easily there's so many things this card does true true it's slightly better than Ravenous Chupacabra who's also set. here and I love that card. Jeeps. Slightly better, but they're both good. They're both you really, it just turns out recurrable with like creatures are just, they're recurrable with effects that yeah. are super strong are good. I mean, this is how you overwhelm. You slowly overwhelm them, and you just here's my stuff. It's not going away. Your stuff is going away. Get it out of here. And I'm eventually just gonna bury you, along with all my creatures. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Barry's no term for destroying magic. Hoo-hoo. Okay, yeah. next one. Destroying a can't be regenerated. Next one. Oh, is the next one mine? The next one's yours. Why don't you read this one, please? Right, this is my this is my hot take of the deck. Nature's claim. Not a creature. Notably not a creature. Hear me out. Come Come green. On. Instant. Destroy your artifact or enchantment. Its controller gains four life. It's one of only three instants in the entire deck alongside Court of Calling and Entomb. Why even put it in? Why? It's not I'm creature. getting to that. Okay, well, why don't you tell me? I that? find in my travels, having a, a one off uh off theme card. Uh, always works when you need it, no matter what is going on. It works when you're ahead, and it works okay. when you're behind. Let's be very clear. That is a very broad statement that is just not true. What? It, does, <laughs> it, it works if you're ahead. It, always, it works if you're behind. It always works when you need it. Yes. That is... That just can't be true. I don't sure. know how that even makes sense. Sure, okay. It doesn't, so, destroy, it doesn't destroy Dovescape, guys. Sorry. I apologize. It but always works when you need it, then that. It's there when you need it. It is always one mana. It is always an instant. It can't be stifled by these creature things that the rest of your deck gets stifled by. And anything that would ever stop Nature's Claim gets stopped by Rex Age and all your friends. So, I recommend this card highly. It's been very useful. Yeah. Can also just a huge mana advantage, and no one expects you to have this one green, like super interactive card. So you can destroy things like. There's like Mana Reflection, I've Destroyed, Gilded Lotus, Omniscience is my favorite. That's my favorite one of all time. He literally, he, when, when I play my Bolas deck, which is basically an Omniscience win deck, he he, it's, has the most obvious open one mana all the time mm-hmm. when he's playing his Great Activation too, once your friends know you start playing it. <laughs> I don't you, I all I have to do is leave a forest on tap if you don't cast Omniscience. <laughs> That's pretty good for a stupid uh, creature deck. Uh, no, I just don't cast Omniscience until I have counters fall in my uh, hand. No, I just don't want to cast it. <laughs> I never, I didn't want to win the game. Cast it whenever <laughs> I feel it. I can do it what I want. What do we got? What do we cut from here? Ratchet Confluence? Cool card. I actually like Ratchet Confluence a lot. I like it in EDH. Don't not like a, it in this deck. Creature. 
Not a creature. This we just, we're literally like, maxing out like, on creatures. Yeah, I even when I looked at the deck list, I felt like you can even go up more creatures. You can even go up to like fifty or so yeah, creatures. Yeah, yeah I'm I not mean, saying that you need to. At some point, tutors get better than creatures. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I agree. so that's basically everything that's not a creature is a tutor, or this like effect you really want. Putrefy, uh, just we don't need spot removal like that. It's, it's not that good of a spot removal. Damnation got cut for a card. I, Damnation might be in this deck if it were not for this other card. That is like a million times better for one more mana, which we will get to later. Why, we, why, why don't we go over right now since we're saying... Because it's in the next category. Oh, it's yeah. a, Okay, it's in our winning the games category. You you asked for it. It's back. The winning the game category is back, ladies and gentlemen. It's just so generic. And every deck needs to do this. Except for our last deck. Yeah, but it was, it was, oh. it was winning the game with the combo that was in there. You'll have to watch to find out. Have to watch the whole video and give us a million likes on it. Mm. I don't like Whatever. it. Sorry I touched it. So how do we win the game? Well, how about some triggers from stuff like Blood Artist. Blood Artist is a 2 mana, 0, 1. Yes. 1 in the black. Buckle in, by the way. Creature, Vampire. Whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain one life. And so we duplicate this effect all over the place. We have... Three sim two other similar effects in Zula Percutha, which is just when your creatures die. Same thing. Ah, whenever another creature, whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one and you gain one. Falcon Wrath Noble is three to black for a two-two flyer. Whenever it or another creature dies, target player loses one and you gain one, which is the same exact text as Blood Artist. But then we have this other, you know, loose cannon over here, Poison Tip Archer, which is two black green for a two-three reach death touch. Whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. Now back to what you were saying. They're basically. These are all the same These are your squad. Effect, we'll These say. are your main man. Main men. They're boys, all, your they're, boys. Yeah, they're all basically the same. These are you you wanna get you're gonna get a ton of creatures out here, and you're gonna sacrifice them often, and these guys are constantly gonna drain your opponents. It adds up. Most of them gain you life. Yep. Keep you alive. And uh you know with this next card, that's slightly better than damnation, but I also said it's a million times better than damnation. Uh they just win you the game like every time. Well, the con the uh, one of the one of the best graveyard win cons in EDH. It's just the easiest. It's like okay, I don't need to do any work. Look at this, you're dead. Yeah, kind of like omniscience, where it's just like yeah, it's like all right, guys, or right, expropriate. It's, it's like do I do I just win? It's like uh, we're just done. But this one, it only costs five mana, and it is living death. Probably saw this coming. I literally one. I'm not gonna read this. For, I'm not gonna read the text in this card. I'm gonna tell you what it does. Okay. Sure. Because the text in this card is stupid. Sure. There's one key word. It's that's very, it. very easy to explain just by saying it. Basically, you ex you just exchange creatures in the graveyard and put them on the battlefield and put all creatures on the field in the graveyard. It's worded differently, I know. The only thing that matters is you sacrifice all creatures you control. Each player does. So Yes, yes. You obviously have the best graveyard. Not even remotely close. You also have... You hope uh, so. You hope you're not I playing mean, against the other graveyard deck. And you're right, like, there is potential Ooh. for nonsense. But things like, I mean... You're definitely playing more Zulaport Cutthroats than anybody else. So, the See, worst... there, I don't know if there's another one of those effects. No, there is. There's one that has two, like, two damage. In red, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rage Thrower. They, well, they're playing a red-black Rage Thrower deck. So. <laughs> sure, of course they are. <laughs> anyway, these guys stack up, and it almost doesn't matter what they get. Like, oh, they got Elish Norn. Whatever. All these 25 creatures just die at the same time, and I'll just kill everybody. That's a lot of damage if 25 of your guys die. Anyway, uh, let's say you get Grey Merchant, Kakusho, our cards that come back, Micaeus, the Unhallowed, which gives you two, a lot, a lot two of your, sacks of everything. You, you also get, them up, two sacks of everything. You get a lot of sack uh, outlets um, yeah. on top of all this. Vister Seer, Carrion Feeder, all these friends from before, Ashnod's Altar. That's not coming back. I was saying things are coming back. It could just be in play. Like, yeah, I mean that's that's Very true. But it's not like you're it's not like you're reanimating that. Sure, but also stupid thing about the wording on this. Not that it's going to come up in EDH. It just the wording on this card just gets around Graph Digger's cage. Why? Because it's stupid. Because they wanted me to lose my first modern tournament <laughs> to living in. It's so that's that's that uh, fireballish type thing where you're probably going to win every time you cast it. Yeah, and if you don't, it's pretty rare. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely have... It can just serve as a board wipe, too. I have definitely played games where opponents have 
played this character, gotten a lot of advantage, and still not won because mm-hmm. they just didn't combo off. Sometimes you just get bored right after that, and it's like, well, true. I, I get, it's a lot harder with all these guys, though. That's true because you're gonna, like, especially because usually when you have if you have two or three of these, you can probably leverage the fact that if somebody wipes the board, yeah, you can kill any one player. Oh, uh, you can do this, but you're gonna take fifty three. Do you wanna? You, is that is that? Uh, do you want to die? Do you want to take? I'll no. have you know. Well, not really. I will do it every time to get, and then that player can kill me. It's yes. fine. Yes. I will spitefully kill them. Absolutely. That's and what the mayor's all about. Uh, we cut. Here's some cuts uh, from the game winning category. Yeah. Uh, Grave Titan. It's a good card. But these these cards just they're too slow for me. They're too unreliable. I don't think they're impactful enough. You know, we got Grave Titan, Warm Coil Engine, Abhorrent Overlord, which is cool. And I get the theme. You know, Avengers Endicar. You're making tokens, and then you can sack them all. But I'd rather have Micaeus and Pawn, which give you guys like a second life. Per se, over these guys, I think it's like, and they're really expensive. I don't know. I like the the cheap end of stuff. Speaking of cheap end of stuff, how did this deck compare to the original? Well, I mean, it had a budget of one hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty dollars. I think we and nailed it. Total price additions were ninety four dollars and three cents, which is just under one hundred dollars, oh, which is way under one fifty. Pretty good. You're welcome. We're pretty good at that. If you have fifty dollars and you're like, "Oh man, I really wanted to use that fifty, just spend it on duels. Just upgrade the land base more. I mean, you could add like Blooming Marsh, but I think we the land the place we landed with this mana base is pretty solid. I don't think it needs too much work. Yeah, two color mana bases aren't very hard, uh, which is good. It helps if you are building a commander deck for the first time. I would strongly suggest. Because I would say you want to play at least two cards in commander because it, yeah, it really fun. it really helps you get a broad like it gives you a, a larger a, such it doubles your card pool it literally doubles your card pool so I would say the best place to start in commander is two colors because mm-hmm. the mana base is so much cheaper than a three color deck true you literally go from needing like maybe one fetch land to needing it, three fetch lands possibly more yeah possibly like it's seven. like and you don't need fetch lands in a deck like this you just they're useful but like. There's no synergies, so you don't really... The one thing I might do is add all the green off-color fetches, which uh, Jared said he did not want, yeah. and then maybe put Dryad Arbor in the deck. But I just left it out. Because it's not, this, it's not a linchpin to this deck at all. It's no, just extra not at money all. that you need as well. Alright, so, so... Jinx! No, we have to finish this video. But Alright, so the before, you know, the original deck, uh, average CMC, 3.71. The new CMC, our deck, 3.17, so that's pretty hefty. Uh, basically, every time you cast two spells, you save a mana. Like, that sounds pretty good to me. Joe's being very quiet. 32 changes total, and that is going to wrap up the comparisons for this video. What if I unjinxed you? This didn't work. Well, that's unfortunate. That probably means we have to end the video within the next half hour. But I could go on forever about this deck. This deck was super fun, super cool. Love the sacrifice theme. Love the random infinite combo. Love the four horsemen, like, lose life people. They're cool. They're, they, bring, they bring death to, yeah, it's okay. All right, so if you would like to submit your deck list to us to have us completely ruin it, you need only subscribe comment your deck list in the comment section below thank you and that's it you just need to leave your deck list for us so we can respond which we most likely will we have this backlog of decks we haven't gotten to and uh pretty much nothing's out of the question although at this point probably looking for a non-green deck because we've done five in a row so maybe spice it up a little bit with that but other than that i think we're good here any closing thoughts? Probably a lot, right? Is that our new send-off, you think? We should just wave.